Sorry, Holmes. Just checking. <laughs> Nothing like being absolutely certain. You taught me that. Highly unreliable. applied to the wrist, which I was sure you would examine straight off. You knew all the time? Not until last week when Holmes came to me with the most incredible story I'd ever heard. One that I couldn't for the life of me believe. That you had plotted to murder your good old friend. It was because I wouldn't believe it that we went to all this fuss to obtain your confession. To pretending to find a music hall entertainer, exposing him, making you think everything was just as you left it. The quick change artist, you. The cockney was a little rusty, I'm afraid. But I knew the only way to drive you back to the scene of the crime was to plant that seed of doubt. But where? Everywhere they said I was, old chap. Madagascar, Calcutta, Saint Tropez. Particularly Saint Tropez. I knew the longer I stayed away, the more complacent you'd become. I knew you'd start to become careless, and that was my cue to attack. And so, a week ago, I reappeared to the Strad, told him the whole story, and organized the two-part melodramatic charade we have just concluded, with, I might add, predictable success. I mixed that gas myself. I listened with my own ears. There was no heartbeat. A simple yogi exercise, Watson, which suspends respiration and deadens the pots. Had you used my hypersensitive stethoscope instead of your own standard model, you might have discerned the fainters of hums. But you were rooted to that chair. You couldn't escape. There was no way. There was one way, Watson, and I would have thought, being a man of science, you would have hit upon it. Although your deadly vapor began to do its job quite efficiently, and you were thoughtful enough to seal up any chink of air in this attic, you neglected to withdraw my pipe, in which Thanks to a fortuitous wad of badly packed tobacco, there was an air block between the stem and the bowl. After you left, I managed to squirm the thing into my mouth. That gave me just about 45 seconds of oxygen. Enough time to topple myself on the chair and stick the bowl of my pipe through a knot hole in the timber, below which flowed enough air to combat the lethal fumes you so generously released. Although the gas had no immediate ill effect upon me, it did, as in the nature of toxic matter on rawhide, expand the leather clamps from the chair, enabling me to wiggle out of their grasp. After all these years, to do such a thing to a good, unselfish man to give you everything, it, it turns my gut. I must all fight in human nature, I have. Yeah, that's what you've done to me. And we shall endeavor to restore it, Lestrade. Towards that end, I wonder if you'd be good enough to leave the doctor and I alone for a while. What? Leave you alone with that almost out of me. Oh, as you can see, Lestrade, Watson is quite helpless now. It took all the gumption he could muster for his one great gamble. That having failed, I don't think we need ever worry about him again. 
Do we, Watson? Go along, Lestrade. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Dr. Watson. I'll never be the same again. You're shattered. 